Dr. Kahad, are the current developments in Israel, the widespread protests, considered a crisis? Yeah, it is clearly a crisis. Uh, some people argue that this is one of the most um, uh, central crises in the wow. in the life of Israel. Some people, for example, who fought in wars, say that this is uh, uh, like a war, like a really deep crisis. People see it as a crisis and you can see the level of mobilization of the people who are against the reforms is amazing. Just imagine that one night, uh, 1% of the population on, of Israel stood on the main road and blocked it. Just imagine that uh, 30 million Americans <laughs> would stand <laughs> on a highway and block it. This is the proportions, if you think about it. This is indeed a crisis. Uh, and this is uh, from the point of view of, uh, of uh, the people who are against the reform, a fight for Israeli democracy, and from the point of view of people who support uh, this so-called reform, it's uh, uh, something that's supposed to let them govern after all these years. I mean, the Israeli political right is in government at most time in the last 50 years. But the, the thesis of the Israeli right is that the court and other uh, elites uh, do not let it govern. The, do not is, let it govern, I see. Yeah, the, this is, uh, you know, this is the populist claim that the media, the academia, the, all of these uh, um, uh, forces are, do not let uh, the, um, the people rule. Now, the people is, of course, always uh, a leader that is uh, some, I don't know why, but is in, always in difficulties with uh, the law and, uh, and, with, uh, and having troubles also to understand <laughs> the limits of his power and democracy. Yeah. So that's, that's the game. It's the populist uh, game. It's not only in, in, in Israel, it's in the United States, in Brazil, in of course. Hungary. Uh, um, has Israel had internal crises like this in the past? I'm not referring to its, uh, its wars and battles with outside forces, you know, in Lebanon or Palestinian occupied territories or Egypt. I'm talking about internal political crisis that bubbled up to such a uh, heated point like this. I don't think so, but we did have some uh, some dramatic moments. The assassination of Yitzhak Rabin in 1995, yeah. 1995 was a dramatic moment, but uh, after it, the country kind of uh, came together. United. And, uh, and uh, we also had a crisis in uh, 2005 with the disengagement from the Gaza Strip when people, uh, settlers were taken uh, by the military from, from their houses in order to, to uh, leave the Gaza Strip. So this was a crisis, especially uh, for the people, uh, the settlers, etc., even though uh, some people uh, forget that uh, the disengagement was conducted by Ariel Sharon when he was the leader of the Likud party. Yeah, Some people are tend to blame the left for it, but <laughs> those who conducted the disengagement and those who could have conducted it came from the Israeli right. So this is uh, part of the. Um, I think part of the crisis today is people who blame uh, the left or the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court for not blocking this uh, move. So they are mad at these forces and uh, they tend to forget that Netanyahu was there and Netanyahu was uh, part of the time for this, even uh, voted three times for the disengagement and part of <clears throat> the time he was against it. Interesting. Um, in the 
in your closing remarks in the last segment, you said this, democracy is much more than the rule of majority. So what is democracy to you? How do you define it? Well, the, because democracy is not just the rule of the majority, we have checks and balances. We have different majorities. We require super majorities. But if you think about it, if you're, uh, let's go back to and represent a conservative view of democracy. Mm -hmm. Democracy is about the people and the conservative person, for a conservative people person, the people are the uh, gener the future generations and the generations that lived before. So this means that the current majority of the people have no right to change uh, things uh, unless it does so, so step by step. Now, if you're a liberal... So I uh, if I may interrupt you for a moment, please. So a conservative is more about continuity and gradual, subtle, subtle reforms if necessary. Yeah, because the people okay. from the rule of the people from a conservative are not only the people who live right now, are the people that will live in the future and people who lived in the past. Yeah. For, for a conservative, they have a wide, wide uh, definition of the people, and that's why they are called conservative. Now, if you're a liberal, you are supposed, and I'm a liberal not only in the leftist American sense, even if you're a neoliberal in the right wing sense, mm -hmm. what you are, what you think is that the uh, individual and sometimes even specific groups should be uh, guarded vis a vis the state. That's what the United States was all about. They ran away from Europe, the founding fathers, and they wanted to build a state that would be, have so many checks and balances so the people would be uh, able to live uh, happily ever after without the government bothering with their religion or with their uh, income or whatever. So also from a liberal point of view, democracy is about all of the people, not just the majority of the people. If democracy is about the majority of the people, it might mean that the majority of the people will not allow you to practice your religion, uh, will yeah. take your money and divide your money between them. I mean, just imagine what a majority, a tyranny of the majority can do. So, of course, democracy is not the rule of the majority. Democracy is a lot about specific uh, rights that cannot be taken even by a super, super majority. Is the is really um, democratic institute with which you're affiliated? Um, is that considered a conservative uh, think tank institution, or from what you what you're proposing? I gather yes. No, I I wouldn't say so. It's a mm -hmm. nonpartisan, but you know, conservatism in Israel these days is to conserve the system as it is. So what? was once called a leftist or something like this in Israel is the real conservative, while I see. people who call themselves conservatives are the real radicals. And I'm not sure that this is only typical for Israel. I think that in many countries, the guardians of the current order are people who used to be identified as left. Now, this is a historical moment. I mean, 50 years ago, the left has these dreams of becoming a, or not 50, 100 years ago, the socialist left have this dream of becoming a majority because the, because the working people were a majority. They have this dream, we'll become a majority and we will establish a socialist state. However, this dream was not fulfilled and the so-called leftists have become also liberals and now they call themselves social democrats or sometimes in the united states they call themselves liberals and what is really interesting and this is type of you know history is laughing at us yeah. is that the real conservatives these days are to be found in uh, very few on the right and many of them are right now at least are on the center and center left <laughs> that's really shifted 
Uh, Dr. Rahad, thank you so much for educating me and our audience and to our listeners. If you know of any history that could provide more perspective from the past on this subject, please share it with us and tell us what's your perspective. Thank you so very much. Sure, thank you.